play and call it work. Hey everybody, Matthew and Steve here from MiniWarGaming.com and welcome to day three of our Age of Sigmar 2nd Edition coverage. And I don't want you to think because I'm calling it day one, two, and three that this is going to continue daily like this because holy cow, this has been a lot of filming. Uh, so after today, there's going to be a bit of a break and then we're going to be coming back into next week. We're going to be doing Traveling Through the Realms where I'm doing lore videos about each of the realms and then battle reports in said realms. Nice. We're also going to be starting our faction foci okay. and and uh, going through some of the factions. Those ones are going to be over a long period of time because there's a lot of factions to go through, but we'll, we'll try to get through the more important ones or the more popular ones, I should say, to start off. And then we're just going to be doing regular Age of Sigmar battle reports as well and hopefully some narrative campaigns. <laughs> and for all of you who love 40K, of course, don't worry, we're not ignoring it. That, that will continue to be covered and we have another narrative campaign coming soon for 40K, probably Death Watch Tyrus. So anyways, Enough of that. Today we are focusing on the General's Handbook, but today is kind of a lot of stuff being posted. Uh, there's going to be, first off, we're going to have a General's Handbook review discussion right now. And the vault, we are then going to be doing a more in-depth uh, look at the new summoning rules. A lot of changes there. Yes, and, and we're going to talk about how it's going to affect the game. You've already, yeah. you've already experienced that yourself. Yep. I have not yet, but you know, it's, you, can pretty, you can look at it and start to do some math. Yeah. And there's also two other regular battle reports today that are focusing on stuff in the General's Handbook, so making sure there are battle plans from there and some allegiance from there as well. And there's two other battle reports because if you had been following our narrative campaign, Illarath's Awakening, the finale goes up today. Right. It's just the way that it actually lined up, but we ended up filming it in second edition. So don't be like, oh, I don't want to watch that. It's probably in first edition. It actually is in second edition. And they are two enormous games, both about 3,500 points in size. Oh, wow. I remember. So, you remember that? Oh, good game. I, I know. I remember that. Yeah. They, oh, they were really good games. It was a really good conclusion. On Monday, we're going to have the epilogue come out to tell us how the entire story ends. And I really liked it. It really ended up being really good. So make sure you go check those out, too. So tons of content for you to watch. I know you're not going to be able to watch it all today. unless If you, if you are, then put in the comments, challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of stuff, uh, but you can watch. Obviously, it's going to be there tomorrow and the next day as well, so just watch it at your own pace, of course. Uh, but I would say to start here, yeah, where you yeah. are. So if you already watched everything else, then, well, you did it wrong. Challenge completed. <laughs> Challenge completed, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so we're going to focus, we're going to talk about the General's Handbook 2018, which thankfully is going to be coming out at the same time as the core rules. And I say thankfully right. because you can't really play the game without it. Yeah, you, you, you need this book. You can play without it? But using the old one, but doesn't... No, no, no. I mean, like, you could just play without the General's Handbook without points. Mm. You could. Wounds? There is still rules in mm. the book for technically open and narrative play. Yeah. You play with wounds yeah, and yeah, not with... That. No? Why don't not? That. No. But surely 16 goblins are the same as the mega boss on a maw crusher. Actually, it's 14. 14 it's grots. 14. <laughs> 14 yeah, grots. no, clearly, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. 14 zombies, you know. Same, elf, as, same as seven. Same, same, same as seven liberators from the Stormcast yeah. Eternals. Yeah. A cannon's got what, four wounds? Who? A cannon? A cannon, I don't know. I don't play with cannons. Four wounds, one zombie, or four zombies. Same thing. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah, okay. exactly. But you have to. Now, it's funny that you say that, but just as a little aside, in open play, you can summon even more, there's less restrictions on summoning. Oh, well, okay, what if you're playing Fire Slayers? Well, then you, you just screwed. <laughs> you get, get this book. Get, 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 get the book. book. <laughs> you, now, you're more than welcome. In fact, in many, as, as much as we're making jokes here, in our narrative campaigns, I do use points as a guideline, but I often ignore them too, and the games still right. work out. But you have to have experience with the armies, and I kind of dictate both sides you of it. You do. You guide the other side. And so it's not like, hey, you bring whatever models you want, I'll bring whatever models I want. So basically, if you're wondering what this discussion is all about, if you're new to Age of Sigmar, when Age of Sigmar first came out, it didn't have the General's Handbook at all. No. It had no points values. It no. had no structure to build in no. your lists. And it was kind of a wreck. Those um, are not good days. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're dark <laughs> there are dark days for for Steve and anybody else who had to play. It really was the age of chaos. Yeah, it was the age of chaos. It was actually the age of chaos. Yeah, <laughs> and then the General's Handbook 2016 came out, gave points values to Boom, everybody. Beautiful in, game. Introduced <laughs> match play, narrative yep. play, and open play, 
which then went over to 40k as well, which I'm very happy about. And then they did General Handbook 2017, which updated the points, added some Allegiant stuff, removed some stuff. And now we have 2018, which is on the same day as the second edition, which updates the points values even more. Yep. Some armies got more um, modifications than others. We'll yep. talk a bit about that. We're not going to go over every points change. You can always pick up the book and do the comparisons yourself. Uh, and the nice thing is, in a General's Handbook, they put a star beside any units that had points changed. Which is really nice, yeah. Or if they had a change, like there's one in here, I can't remember which one it is, that can be battle line now if you have the right allegiance and all of that. Iron so. Breakers Dispossessed, one of them at Is least. that what it is? Yeah. That, that's the one. There was only one. There was only one? Yeah, it was oh, just that one. That was that none. Yeah, Iron Breakers now can be battle line. And of course, if you have the Games Workshop AOS app, all of that will be on there for free. Um, I think when the game launches, I'm guessing, but who knows? I don't know when, so maybe right. by the time you watch this video, it's already been done, it's already been updated, because yeah. I know the core rules are available for free already on ageofsigmar.com. Right. So, let's crack this open. Let's talk about it. Now, if you're familiar with 2017's General Handbook, same layout, same idea, Right. but there's even more stuff in it. Yeah, it just looks bigger. Okay, so, I don't know. You want to start? You want me to start? You want to go, go ahead and start this thing off because with I open mean, play. This is this is generally not. I point to the thing you can't see. Open play and narrative play generally not my area. Okay. Yeah. So I'll start with the open play and narrative play, and then you can talk a lot more when we get to the yep. match play. Match play is my thing. Yeah. So I love match play too, by the way. <laughs> oh, and one thing I should point out: one big change is a lot of the match play rules that were in the general's handbook are no longer in the general's handbook. Right. Because. They are now just all the rules. Which was fantastic. Yes, and I, I really like that because a lot of them just made sense for the game overall. For example, the rule of one said that any hit rolls or wound rolls or save rolls of one unmodified always fail. Yep. So you, if you couldn't use Mystic Shields in first edition then to get up to a one plus save. But that was only in match play. And so in open play you technically could stack all these things. And uh, now they just say that in the main core rules. So you spells. Spells. You match play, you couldn't cast the same spell more than once. Right. Now that's just a rule, so you can't start putting Arcane Bolts and Mystic Shield, which is really nice that Wait. at the same time they introduce all the spells. Right. See, I actually like that. Uh, even narrative play, play, whatever you want to call it, um, I've had games where I, I use Arcane Bolt multiple times. Or Mystic Shield. It's like, I, I, I know I just use Mystic Shield, but I'll use it again, yeah. and I'll use it again. And so now combining that with the nerf of Mystic Shield, it... Um, One spell. It's made you just, you use it when you have nothing else to do. They were, it might, they're good changes, in my opinion. Oh, yeah, I loved them. Like, and we've used Arcane Bolt and Mystic Shield in our games. Yep. But it was more like a, I got nothing else to do. So, sure, reroll ones, this you guy's guys. He's got one wound, I'm in combat with him. I want to go charge yeah. the next thing. Yeah, exactly. You'll take that last wound off, yeah. and maybe I'll get D3 Mortal Wounds. So, they are still, they are still utility spells, yeah. but it's more like, a, if you've got nothing else to do, surely you can put Mystic Shield on somebody. Yeah, no. Like, I mean, surely. Right. Like, why not? Because if somebody's going to get, sh if nobody's getting shot at or hurt in your army, then what I've, game are you playing? I think I've still cast it in every one of my games so far in, in second edition. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, it's never worked, but. <laughs> I know, it's just, it feels a little more lackluster, but it's like, whatever. So open play, uh, they introduced a few things. Now, we have the open play battle plan generator. That's, that's not new where they let you randomly generate your deployment, scenario, all that kind of stuff. But what? No, 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 it's, it's the next one I want to talk about, but go ahead. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, so I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna glaze over things that haven't really changed. So we're just gonna start flipping through the book. So that, yeah, that hasn't changed. They have it all in the book. I don't know if they had it in the past General's Handbook, because we just have the cards, so I always use the cards. Right. But then they introduce... Yeah, so I forgot about this. Aerial battles. We talked about this briefly, when we first cracked open the book, and I completely forgot about this. What's going on here? Okay, so you didn't read it yet? No, no, I actually completely forgot. Okay, so I've actually read through all the detailed stuff. That, this, is, this, this book has seen a lot of toilet time. Sorry, Steve. That's what I did. <laughs> I'm, I'm, in, I'm just watching the video now. <laughs> Go ahead, talk, talk to me. <laughs> the aerial battles. Uh, as soon as I saw aerial battles, I'm like, oh, no. Because I remember Death from the Skies in 40K, and that just wasn't fun. <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> and uh, especially the 7th edition version. Oh, it was awful. Uh, aerial <laughs> battles are supposed to allow you to represent, well, Aerial battles, and there's one of two modes that you can you can play it in. You can play. They actually have rules for having two tables set up at the same time, where one is in the air and one is on the ground. Okay, we've had this before. Can you finish? Oh yeah, yeah. It's okay. existed before. And the second mode is just that you're playing in um, the stratospheric aerial battlefields, where that's just above ground and nothing else. And in those ones, you're still allowed to place terrain, but they represent like the peaks of buildings, like the tie at top, tops of skyscrapers or mountains. So anybody you put on them can't move. Uh, so they basically, they, they allow guys with fly to pile in farther. They can actually pile in and attack if they're within six inches rather than three inches. 
They've got their own objectives and twists. So it's, it's still open play. It's not meant to be taken seriously. It's meant to be for a lot of things that can fly. So imagine like a carriage run overlord battle against Zinch. Because everything there can pretty much fly, right. right? You can put just pink horrors on the table and be like, yep, they're flying. Or if you want it to look more thematic, then you can use everybody on discs and have that kind of battle. Uh, so it's meant for that kind of stuff. And so they have a few extra rules that they sprinkle in, and then they give you new objectives and twists, which you can use in the open war generator thing. So you said they had this yeah, before? Yeah, so I, I can't remember. I'm pointing to where the book used to be. I can't remember which book it was. It was one of the old campaign books of Galmar. It's one of them, God Beast. There's a scenario... Um, I can't remember what it's called, but something like Slay the Beast or whatever. You have a 4x4 four four table and a 2x4 table, where the 2x4 would be the error section, and you can freely move from either table in your movement phase. Uh, Pretty much you, from anywhere from one table to the other. Right. right. Yeah. And it, only flyers can go in the air, and if you got killed in the air, you'd hit a random spot on the table and possibly do wounds. That's a bit similar to this. Okay, so we actually, I played a game with uh, somebody a while back where we just, we didn't have the models to fly, so we did this little sewer on one little side and did like, you know, cracks so in the ground. popping up and down on the Yeah. Sewer. It was fun, it was different, so this might be interesting to try. I, I, I think it'll be fun to try once. I have a funny feeling we'll be. I haven't thought about honestly. I haven't thought about the game since this conversation. So. But, we, but we haven't had an aerial battle uh, battle report yet, and you're probably not going to see one of those for a while because honestly, there are a ton of other things that we can play first, and this just does not get on my radar. It's something I really care about. Yeah. But they do have a bunch of battle plans for them. A couple of those, and then we immediately go to narrative play. Uh, now the narrative play special rules. This is where it gets a little interesting. Uh, I don't know how often you'll see this, but they introduce what is it two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight pages of special rules for narrative games. Wow. They're not meant to all be used. The okay. idea is that they're like, you know what, in our game we're going to use a tunnel network. So all terrain features have the labyrinth tunnel scenario rule, which is if a unit is wholly within six inches of it, you can remove the unit and set it up wholly within six inches of another terrain feature with that more than nine inches away from enemies. That's this counts cool. as their move. That's so you, cool. Yeah, you can make a little narrative, your own little campaigns and your own little special scenarios. So... I personally think this is fantastic because one thing I noticed for Illarath's Awakening is that um, I didn't have to do much scenario writing. Whereas my 40k battle reports, I find that I, had to, I have to write my, a lot of my scenarios from scratch. Um, and, and I know that 40k has a ton of scenarios available to them, but I find that most of them... They're, they're, they have weird skews. Yeah, they, they, they're built specifically for two armies, built a specific right, way. Right, yeah. And, and so a lot of the historic ones, and, um, and so they're just not that interesting. There's a few narrative ones. The, the open play ones and narrative play ones, honestly, are not that interesting to me in 40K. I've played through them all, and they're like, yeah, that was fun. But it was more fun because my opponent was fun, not because the scenario right. was any good. And so I often find myself, I've spent a lot more time crafting my 40K scenarios, whereas pretty much almost every single game we played in Illarath's Awakening was using a scenario that I pulled from a book somewhere. Um, wow. For example, the very first one I did with uh, with um, Luca and his Stormcast Eternals. Luca the dice. Yeah, just the Luca the dice is uh, he had to defend. He had to to prevent the enemy from punching through his lines into the city, and that was actually just a Stormcast Eternal scenario from their oh, book. Interesting. And the places of power rules from the Sylvaneth book, I used that a couple times to to show like the awakening and stuff, and it worked perfectly narratively. There was just tons of stuff like that. The 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 Fire Slayers, when I introduced them, uh, there was a perfect scenario from their book that worked really well that I used. And so I, I was able to use all sorts. And on top of that, I used the Path to Glory upgrade system yeah. for your upgrades. Yeah. That mostly worked. There was a couple things in there that were clearly a little yeah. overpowered once it scaled up to a bigger game. But um, overall, like it, I found that all the necessary elements to create a narrative were there. And maybe as I do more and more of them, I'll run out and I'll have to make my own. So, okay, you forgive me because I can't remember what they're called. Do you know, uh, maybe they're called open war cards? Yep. Yeah, uh, right? Okay. Do any of these overlap with those? No. No. Because the open war cards, really they choose thing. a deployment. Right. They give you the objective. You get a twist, right? And you get a twist, which is like, it's dark, so everybody can only see 12 inches away. Or the twist is it's super objective, so you actually draw a second objective. I had, I had a, I guess, bring them in one day. I wasn't really aware of them. I tried them for the first time, and that was fantastic. Yeah, those really are super, great. Super fun. But like just adding stuff to your game, like I could add I don't, any of these to any match play game. Just so the, the hard part about this for a, a person just going and playing is that you have to know them, and there's eight pages of them. 
Because otherwise you're like, okay, let's let's add a special rule, and then you spend the next half an hour reading through them, being like, no, not that one, maybe not that one. And by the time you get to one, you're like, you're drained of any desire, <laughs> and so you're just like, yeah, whatever. Whereas when I go to use a narrative campaign one, um, I will have looked through these so many times that I'll become very familiar with them. Right. Oh, I remember that one. Yeah, yeah. And I'll be like, yeah, that, that one one was pretty. And I'll modify them for whatever I need for the scenarios. So I think, like, yeah, Dawn Attack. Subtract one from hit rolls for missile weapons that fired during the first battle round. Honestly, I'm, I, I would use these. I would. Well, then I just like try it like, I just, like, stuff like, uh, you can't run unless you're able to fly. Play a game like that. Like, you just cannot run unless they're able to fly because it's boggy ground. Cool. We have some more you know, story to our game. Yeah. Yeah. Blood Moon. Add one of the bravery characteristic of all chaos and death units. See, that, that one's okay. It's kind of boring. There's other ones like the Tunnel Network. That is cool. So I would rather they had added uh, some sort of dice system to this. Made 66 of them. Huh. Yeah. So then you choose or roll. Yeah. And at the very least, then you don't have to memorize them all. You could be like, yeah, let's use one. Look all it right. up. Be like, no, that's garbage. Roll it again. Well, my opponent's chaos and I'm, and not. I'm not. He's death. getting a bonus. Oh, well. Yeah. That's what happens. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. So th- that's that's what that is. I'm not going to go too much into it. There are some more complex ones which are really cool, um, but more ways to play. More but ways to t- yeah, and that's but that's my big thing is that's that a game needs to give you lots and lots and lots of ways to play, and uh, this does just that. It gives you some historic battles with some beautiful scenery. I love I it. I was just looking at that a moment ago. Right, right. right. The skulls with the realm gate. And that was the one thing as well that for the first while for Age of Sigmar first edition, I'm like, what does your terrain look like? Right. We now had we no know. idea. We had no idea. Now we have lots of it's ideas. It took a long time to get some visuals. Oh, and that annoyed the heck out of me. That's I was I had zero interest in Age of Sigmar when it first came out, and for the probably and for easily the first two years that it was out, uh, my interest started probably earlier this year. When I finally, when they put up that one video I was gonna say, that, showed exactly the realm, that showed the realms, yep. and I'm like, oh, that's interesting. And that's what, that got me into it. I started reading books, and all of a sudden I'm like, oh, actually, this is awesome. They need to, you know, set the setting. They have to give you the did. setting. They don't. They can't just be like, it's whatever you want. It's like, well, if, if I, I can make my own game, thanks. Right, right. Like, <laughs> like, don't make me make my own game. Make, let me play your game. Can, I, can you do the work, and then I can just play, please? And they have. And and to be fair, like they, they probably have been doing this work all along. It's just like... This, you get you get to witness a new game birth essentially is borrowing heavily from its old like Warhammer Fantasy for Which a lot of its stuff, but in the end, if you really think about it, it, it leaves most of that behind, and so they're kind of starting from scratch. So we got to see it grow from scratch. So little, yeah, we little did. side note. Yeah, there. we did. <laughs> so lots of battle plans there. Some other cool <laughs> scenery. I know, right? Like just yeah. like that. That isn't that awesome? Huh? You're like, wait a second. You can use those arcane ruins and actually make half decent looking terrain. Like, that's so cool, right? This is just all arcane runes. I know, this is all stuff they sell. It's just arcane runes. And, and, oh, no, 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 uh, there's, there's the stuff from the other stuff, yeah, but the, the, the structure room. of the whole thing is just arcane runes. And then they sprinkle in everything else. So this is all, <coughs> excuse me. This one I want to talk about. Gathering of Might. Sounds scary. It's Apocalypse. Oh, yes. We got to do this soon. Yes. And I remember... Nine years ish ago, when Apocalypse came out for 40k. If you're not familiar with 40k's Apocalypse, Apocalypse basically gives you an excuse to play humongous games. Like, minimum, I remember the rule was minimum 3,000 points, but now I'd say it's minimum 5,000 points to really be considered Apocalypse, because now the points have yeah, gone, right. gone down so much. Well, actually, no, I guess that would make it the opposite. Whatever, it's like 5,000 points plus is Apocalypse. The idea is not balance, it's, nope. it's not any of that. It's just throw down tons of models, get to see an epic fight. Uh, we ran an Apocalypticon event for a few years where we had uh, upwards of half a million points on the table. I think we got 600,000 for one of them, if I remember correctly. And we're going to start those up again once the new place is open. Um, and they didn't really have a... a, a but here, okay, here's the thing, though. I remember when it was announced, because I was new to 40K, and I saw the announcement for Apocalypse where you get to play big games, and I'm like, sweet, they're going to introduce new rules and give you a way to play 40K faster so you can play it larger. Uh, they didn't. Well, They're say. like, okay, here's the rules for Apocalypse. You ready? Play bigger games. Wait. Oh, 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 oh. And there's four. No, there's no stratagems. There was, there was, was formations. The, there was formations. There was stratagems. Remember, like, there's a uh, big old missile from the sky, big blast. Your warlord can do once per game. Was that in the original Apocalypse? Wasn't it? I don't think so. The original well, Apocalypse. I don't, know, I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't think so, but I could be wrong. I don't remember. <laughs> 
Uh, they introduced formations, which gave you all sorts of extra special rules. I don't remember that. But <laughs> but it, that was it. It was just like, here's, here's how you play Apocalypse. Play bigger games. And I'm just like, oh... I'm Boring. like, that's fun and all, Boring. but at the same time, it's like, now I just have to move more models and, yeah. and I have to calculate more special rules. Gathering of Might makes an effort to do exactly what I was hoping they would do, which is make the game play faster. Interesting. Now, it's not going to be perfect. There's still going to be tons of special rules, no game and, and it's going to still take a lot longer to play. But here are the rules. The, there's, there's basically four rules that they introduced to help the game go faster. And then they also introduced legendary traits... Legendary artifacts, you can imagine what those are. They're just command traits, but they're really good. Legendary artifacts are just artifacts, but they're really good. Some of them, some of them aren't. Uh, essentially, first off, in the hero phase, you get three command points instead of one. The idea is that you're playing with multiple players, and so the whole team is together. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. you can always modify that if you're playing bigger games or smaller games. Uh, spells, each wizard can only manifest or only cast one spell. Hmm. And so I think there's two reasons for this. One is to stop there from being so many wizards that there's just so many spells. But at the same time, as soon as you get so many wizards and you can only cast one spell, each spell can only be cast once, you can run out of spells. Right. And so instead what they do is if you can cast more than one spell, you can get plus two to it. You get plus two to casting and unbinding. So your slam, okay. who can cast three, now he can only cast one, which means he can't summon as much. I think that's the part of it as well. Although I think if I were playing Gathering of Might, I'd say no summoning, but whatever, we'll have hey, to play. You we'll have you to know, play. You don't know, yeah. Yeah, but because he can cast three instead of one, he gets plus two to his casting and unbinding. So he'll really be able to do that one and really be able not, to unbind. Not two plus two per spell? Extra no, spell. it's just as if he can cast more than one. Um, if he's able to cast more than one spell, then it's plus two. Okay. Um, and you can only unbind one per phase, too. You can't, you can't be sure. like, if you could do three, you can only do one. On top of that shooting, you can do volley fire where you can double your range, but at minus one to hit. Oh wow, I'll take that trade. Yeah, no kidding. But you can't use an, you can't target an enemy hero unless it's a monster. Sure. So you can't use it to snipe a character on the other side. That's fantastic, actually. Well, yeah, because all of a sudden everything that can shoot can shoot. It's like that sixteen-inch range weapon. That's thirty-two inch now. Right. Sure, it's only going to hit on sixes probably because it's a goblin. But I like it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but here's the big one. Here's the big one for me. It's the combat phase. It's called massed melees. 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 <laughs> um, basically, in the combat phase, typically you would choose a unit, it piles in fights, and then your opponent chooses a unit, they pile in a fight. But instead, whoever's turn it is, they first pile in all other guys. Everybody who can pile in, in other words, people who charged, or those who are within three inches of an enemy, pile in three inches. Then your opponent's side piles in three inches. Here's the rub. Then you fight and everything happens at the same time. Love it! But what it actually says to do, just to be clear, because that sounds like chaos, is that the person whose turn it is, the, t the side whose turn it is, they do all their fights first, and then the other side gets to do theirs, but any models that were destroyed still get to fight back. And I might be like, well, how on earth are you going to keep track of who's in range to fight? Well, here's the other awesome part. As long as one guy's in range to fight, they all are. Ah, massive 60 grot fights. So this could work. This could actually work as a apocalypse game. Yeah, <laughs> so, you, so you remember like uh, the skeleton thing that they're like, yeah, if you do this and this and this, they get 480 attacks. It's like, but oh, yeah, but what's the chances of all of them actually being in range? 100%? Yeah, yeah. 400. I don't I think pull. once we get to 480, I'd say to my I opponent, you know what? I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll pull the unit? I'll tell you what. No, no, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Let's average it. You hit on fours, gets 240 hits. You wound on fours, 120 wounds. I got a four up save at 60 wounds. Can we just agree that 60 wounds? You know what? 70 wounds. I'll make it 70 wounds just so we don't have to roll it. Do you agree? All right, good. <laughs> 70 wounds. <laughs> I hate that. Because 70 <laughs> wounds is going to wipe out any unit, right? So. <laughs> Um, so that, that sounds, that's one extreme situation there because like 60 grots for example would be fighting 60 times um, but like all of a sudden I think I would make it a rule that every squad has to be max size Ooh, oh yeah well, yeah, sure I can get behind that right because yeah. it, what it does is it prevents too many units and then so you, you go into your 20 liberators and before it's like oh that's such a nuisance because most of them won't be able to fight right. it's like no they can they charge up. Let's say they're in range of three units. And more, before you have to be like, okay, these three guys fight here, these two fight over here, and this guy fights over here. Oh, this guy back here, he has plus one to hit, so he's going to fight over there. And it's just like tedious and time consuming. No, they're all going to fight your range. It's like, you know what? No, yeah, I'm just going to put all 20 of them into that guy right there. Because you know what? It's just faster. But even we don't have the malls for that. No, but I'm just saying, though. Hey, that, one day. Okay, well, I, sorry. Max squads or max number of models that you have. Right. So that's fine. Yes. That's, that honestly... So, 
My question is, how long until Forge will finally releases a God Beast then? Well, we have a God. Well, see, the God Beasts are enormous. And I'm talking, well. No, no, no. I mean, like. They sure, are, no, I know the table, the, te- the room, te- the technically, building. Technically, a God Beast is like, it could be the size of a mountain. Well, I'm saying, like, the, you know, Apocalypse is where Forge will kind of really started, right? Yeah. These big titans. Well, yeah, that's where they shine. Tanks. That's where they shine, yeah. Yeah, shine. Special tanks or whatever. When's a special Age of Sigmar apocalypse only? Well, we've seen previews a while back of that corn dragon. Oh, right. Yeah, that one's pretty that. big. So, the funny thing is, the Gathering of Might, they kind of just slipped in there. Yeah. Have you heard them talk about it? I know. It's called the right thing, not Apocalypse, Gathering of Might. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, when they came out with Apocalypse, it was everywhere. It was, it was a huge supplement. It was... Um, it was on their websites. It was on their magazines. Like they, they released it as a big thing separately. So maybe eventually they'll do that with this too. Well, I like, I like how they just add everything in this book. Yeah. Oh, I don't mind that. It's just there's so many hidden treasures that you might miss. Like you might see gathering. It might be like that's fine. I keep going. If you don't realize because it doesn't say apocalypse, you don't know what it is. Like Path of Glory's on in this one, right? Path of Glory's in the main book. Path of Glory and skirmish. Pa- skirmish is nowhere because the original book skirmish is still valid. Sure. Path of Glory is also still valid. Where it is, so you don't need that. Was no, it's in one of these books. No, no, there's additions to it. Oh, additions to it. Okay. But the core rule book does not have the, the main rules for it. The the book, a, the skirmish, and the path to query books are still but good. It's not this one. Because yeah, only the, the core rules changed, right? The general's handbook had to change because there was so many shifts in the game. But those ones, those are fine, right? Um, so I know we're spending a lot of time, and we haven't even hit the match play stuff yet. Right. But on it, which is probably what you're mostly interested in. But this is where my interest lies. So you have to listen to me talk about what I like. Uh, <laughs> but I say I think it's the mass melee, the, this wizard spell thing. Maybe once we play, I'll see. Oh yeah, that's why they do it. That's a really good reason. And the extra command points, sure, that makes sense because you have multiple players. And the volley fire makes your shooting that actually. Great. You're pretty player. much always able to shoot, which is nice. Um, and yeah, and, and so it's a, it's nice that you always get to do damage because I enjoy games where both sides just do damage to each other. Uh, I find it a little more boring to watch two armies who are resilient. I made my five up. I made my five up. Made yeah, my five up. like Nurgle versus what? It Nurgle. Why is five to hit? Yeah, or yeah, you're debuffing the hits, and they got a five up, disgusting resilient. Like to me, I'm like, no, no, kill stuff, especially once Let's you get the trade bigger game. Trade pieces, not just you know wall each other. Yeah, exactly. It's more exciting when things die. Yeah. So this, this, I like the how they they modified the rules. That it's such subtle changes. But just that combat phase is going to mess with people's minds. You're like charging in, that one guy piles in to that one unit over there, and they're like, okay. All these are checking all that. Yeah, because that was the important <laughs> one, and I got my one guy there. It changes the game, actually, which I like. It should, because you're playing these huge games. And you can always play a 10,000 point game and agree not to use Gathering of Might. No, you, you got you to I know, I, I never <laughs> will. I never will. And, I, and the funny thing is, I, playing Apocalypse, I do it because our viewers like it. And so we play the occasional Apocalypse game because they really want it. It's like a day and a half, and afterwards you're exhausted. And I'm sure this one would be the same thing. But I think I'll enjoy this a lot more. Not because it's Age of Sigmar. I just can't wait to try it. But because it's like all of a sudden my big blocks of units. Like I don't have to think, should I make min squads or should I combine them into bigger squads? It's like, no, just screw it all. Bring big squads. Okay? Oh, and there's legendary spells too. Oh, yeah. One for each order, or one for each uh, alliance. And then they have a couple battle plans. That, Those uh, are big tables. Yeah, well, they suggest Eight two by, by four for every X number of. They, they don't even say to use points. They're like, why would you want to calculate points? That would take forever. Say the people who have an app that makes it really easy. Right. I'd still calculate points. I, cause they're like, just do number of units. Which, to be fair, if you just said everybody had to be max size units, probably wouldn't be that horrible a balancing factor. Um, like for example, 60 Grats, 360 points. Max size Liberator Squad, 400 points. So it probably max isn't the 20? worst. Yeah. yeah. Because it's, so it's not the worst balancing factor, to be honest, but I still think I'd use points because it just makes me feel better. Because let's face it, even the points aren't balanced. No, they're not. Okay. All right. I talked a okay. lot. And I, you did come into this video for a reason. Yes. I swear. I'm sure there's already so many comments that are like, are you going to let Steve talk? Yeah. Okay. And so the answer is maybe. I'll let him start and I'll probably interrupt. Match plays in this book. So thank you for coming to this video. It's a pretty good book. <laughs> a good summary. <laughs> Well, what is there to really say about match play? You know what's in here. Okay, so pitch battle um, structure. I don't know what the word I'm looking for here. The, the, we use this chart. What do you want to call it? Structure? Game structure? The way you make your list? Chart. 
Well, that's a that's a chart. I'm talking about the the over. Thanks, thanks, boss. It just ends right there. <laughs> this is a chart. I'm saying your structure of making your list hasn't changed. There hasn't been a whole lot of match play changes in this book. Um, well, with the exception of everything with summoning got well, everything with summoning that didn't have a new battle to him got tweaked. Obviously, we already know about that. We're seeing all that in the yeah. the um, faction focuses. Oh, sorry. The focus. Okay. Um, we got. See, I wish I was more prepared for this, Matthew. It is embarrassing. All right, you know what? I'll, I'll lead the discussion then, and I'll, I'll tell you what to say. <laughs> all right, so let's go back to the, the index. First off, we have all of these. You want me to say it? Okay. There's a lot more battle plans. There's 12 now. How many were there in General Handbook 2017? Oh, honestly, I can't remember. I, uh, six, there were six. Now there's 18. Six in match play. I believe there was a bunch more in the other areas, open and area. Yes, narrative. definitely. I didn't touch that area. It wasn't my thing. But yeah, we have a bunch more in match play. Now there's 18, because there's, there's six in the core book. Oh, right. Because the core yeah. book tells you the rules for open narrative and yeah. matched, and they give you scenarios in there, and this adds 12 more, and then Malign Sorcery adds two more, so there's actually 20 match play scenarios. Pitch battle. Oh, wow, day one. Day one, there are 20 pitch battle scenarios. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> You're gonna make me talk the whole time. Okay, okay. This you know I'll, I'll just say okay, stuff, and then I'll, I'll say here's what the change is, and then I'll be like, "What do you think, Steve?" Here's the thing. <laughs> just, I wanna, here's some honesty with you guys. Uh, Matt did all the reading. I've been playing games and painting. Yeah, that is true. I'm like, okay, guys, <laughs> oh rebase those models. How's the rebasing going? Why haven't you rebased more than 300 models today, Steve? <laughs> Somebody mentioned that you look tired in one of your videos. I'm like, yeah, that's probably why. I haven't gone home in five days! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, did I get the wrong General's Handbook? Oh. Oh, you did too! They've got the other one. Oh. Matt, it's been a lot Pants. of time. <laughs> a lot of time marking all the differences in, in like, points. Yeah. And so that when we talked about it, I could be like, yeah, these are went down. And uh, you know what we can do? because this has been recorded, is I could just turn off the camera and, and go and get it. it. And that sounds like a lot of work. All right, be right. BRB. And we're back. Oh, so I got my book now worth all the changes written in. Now, you were just saying that you don't think that much changed in this General's Handbook no. for match play. No, I mean, as, like, the, the, the structure of the book. We, we talked about like, two seconds as you walked into the room. The, the way the book's laid out, everything's, like, it's, it's, it's the same stuff. The, the layout story. is definitely the same. Right. Um, what we have seen the changes are... The contents are the just uh, updated or tweaked version of everything. Yes, basically. Bas it's it's kind of like, it's somewhat like going from 2017 to 2018 where it's like a points change thing. And or 16, abilities. 17, you mean. Sure. Um, but the thing is, one, there, there have been some interesting trends that I've been noticing amongst it, which I want to talk about. Uh, because they do change the game quite a bit. So let's, if we talk about points, I'm not going to go over what changed in everything. Um, what I did notice is that War Scroll Battalions changed in points a lot. Some went up, some went down. I think they mostly went up, right? Um, no. If I were to say mostly, I'd say mostly went down. Okay. Like, um, for example, where was it, like, really? There's been a lot of points changes by, like, 10 or 20. Right. Like, that does add up. Don't get me wrong, but it's not, like, a big deal. Like, for example, Blades of Corn, their War Scrolls went up. And down almost the same amount. So some of them went up by a lot. Like there's one that went from 120 to 220. Uh, some that went down almost the same amount. So I've seen I've seen War Scroll battalions go down 100 points. And uh, I've also seen. But there's a reason for those ones. But I also yeah sure I'm sure they're balancing. I'm just saying though that there's they're all over the place. I'm sure that a lot of that and a lot of the wizards seem to have gone up in points, um, at least a little bit, probably because of the new summoning stuff. For those for those factions in particular, there's, so there's been a lot of little points tweaks. But I'd say the, the if I was to say which armies got impacted the most, the Demons of Chaos. Or sorry, the Disciples of Zinch. Almost every single thing got changed in points, and I would say, and it's mostly pluses, um, and it makes sense. Well, like the Pink Horrors, for example, went. Where are you guys? There we. Are. They went from 120 points to 200 points. And that's because now when you kill them, they summon the blue horrors for right. free. And when the blue horrors die, you summon the, um, the brimstone horrors Which for free. Which is significantly better than it used to be. Yeah. Now, we're going to talk more about summoning in our vault video, so I don't want to get too much into that. But that, that's where the points change came in, where you look at it and you're like, oh, yeah, this guy 
before, if you wanted to do all that extra stuff, you had to pay the points, and so they didn't have to include the points. But now they, it's kind of like um, the power level in 40K. When you guys, was it you that did the power level versus points one? Yes. Uh, there was one comment that I thought was really true, that they said, well, you, you, you have to consider if you're playing power level that you've got to play open play, not match play, because, then they had a point here, I'm not saying that they were right or wrong, or yeah. you were right or wrong, because summoning is free in open play. And so that's put into the power level. For example, pink horrors in 40k are very expensive power-wise, but they get blue and brimstone horrors free out of them. And so that's why they're expensive. So if you're doing a, is power level good, but then you restrict that they can't summon, that's built into their cost. So we're just seeing that happen here is all I'm trying to say. We don't have to have a big debate about power yeah, level yeah, versus points. Um, is that now they're looking at it and they have to say, this well, if, if all of a sudden they can summon for free, we need to make this more expensive to balance it. Because we want somebody to be for free because nobody's doing it. Right. It was gone from the game. Exactly. Gone. And so that had to be modified. But like I said, we'll talk more about the next one. Other ones to get hugely affected. See, I'm seeing all sorts of little changes here and there. Uh, Flesh Eater Core had a bunch of increases in there. It's probably because of summoning again. It, it was actually, so these ones here are on characters that brought on yeah, extra they more models guys. or units. And all War Scroll Battalions that probably did similar things. Yep. Leeches in the Gash, you oh. see a bunch of increases in War Scroll Battalions. The Night Hunter knew, so they're obviously not going to have any changes. In Destruction, the Beast Claw Raiders went down a bunch, but lots of 20s and 40s. The War Scroll Battalions went both up and down. Um, I'm not seeing any significant changes in order. So many games workshop where those Beast Claw Raiders. Yeah, <laughs> they've been watching your battle report, or battle reports of Josh and like, we're going to tick off those guys and make them even better. Yeah, better make them even better. Yeah, Daughters of Cain, a lot of their War Scroll Battalions went up in points. Um, Fire Slayers were all over the place. The... Uh, overlords, how are they? Caragon Overlords. They we, went up and down. Up and down, eh? But a lot of down. A lot of down. Yeah, a lot of down. Okay, good, because they were a No, no, all down. All down. No, I up, so. up. The Aether Chemist went up 20 points. Okay. But and most, of, went down most of their battalions went down a huge amount. 200 to 130. 200 I'm to seeing, 150. I'm seeing a couple of big drops. Enough yeah, for... One, yeah, enough to reconsider them. The army's going to get about 10, 20% bigger. Yeah. Uh, they, were, they, were not, they were... Seraphim went up and down. Probably yep. and They were probably had to be balanced. When I made my Seraphim stuff. list, I, uh, it was ultimately the same because what went down, things went up, and it was the points for the stuff was the same. Yeah, Stormcast Eternals, most of their War Scroll battalions went down in points, some of them by a lot. Um, so they're going to be a lot more viable. The Griff Hounds are fun. It's no longer oh. 1 to 6 of them. It's 6 to 18 of them. Yeah. But they're way cheaper, though. It used to be 40 per Griffhound. Now it's like equivalent to a little over 20, 23 per Griffhound, 24 per Griffhound. So, so they got to bring them in squads. Um, so yeah, and I could keep going, but it's really just... Actually, I'm just about at the end. So Sylvaneth were mostly down in the War Scroll Battalions. Wanderers went down, and that's about it. So yeah, points were adjusted. A lot of them went down, but not everything went down. Because if everything just goes down and nothing goes up, then you're just making the game bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So there's still lots of things that went up. So it seemed to be, if I had to say, I'd say about 60% of stuff that changed went down and 40% went up. That's my, my, my guess. Uh, the scenery war scrolls were all updated for all of the main scenery. Yep. They're all contained in here now, which is nice. It's a nice companion. No pictures, though. I want a picture. And that would be handy because <laughs> then you could quickly see which they are. Yep. Like an arcane rune versus an azurite rune, all that kind of stuff. So they're all there for That's you. That's new, no? The Citadel Wood? I don't know, because they were all over the place, and so I didn't know them all. And so I can't tell you if it changed. The Citadel Wood now, so it's basically woods, you can't see more than one inch through it. Yeah. Unless either side can fly. So if you're shooting at something with fly, or the guy with fly is shooting, then they ignore it, because you know they're considered to be up higher. Whatever. Yeah. So we're going to skip over that. Um, we're going to talk about summoning in the next video. So the thing that I want to talk about is... Uh, it's been an, the Allegiance abilities have been updated in a lot of areas just to kind of mesh with the way the new system works. Yeah. But I wanted there was one thing in particular that was the biggest change, and I noticed it between most of them. A lot of them didn't change much, like Dispossessed, Darkling Covenants, like the older ones. You didn't see many changes. There's there's minor tweaks here and there. The Free Peoples are pretty much the same. Um, I don't think there's actually any changes. Oh yeah, they they can support within 12 inches instead of six inches now. That was a big deal. That that is that's a big deal. But I'm just saying it's like a, it's a tweak. It's yeah. rather than like a, and and yes, little tweaks can fundamentally change how an army plays, but at the same time, 
um, they it's 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 not like the whole thing was reimagined. Yeah. It was more just like this rule is not quite good enough. We're gonna just make it a little better. Getting the, everything aligned. The thing that I noticed once again, Fire Slayer is about the same. Seraphin, of course, got all their summoning stuff. But uh, I'm trying to find the ones. I thought it was a lot more of them, and I might be mistaken. No, that's the same. I'm, I'm getting through all... There's Slanesh, Slaves of Darkness. Okay, so here's where it starts, and I guess it's not as many as I thought. But a lot of things that were within have become wholly within. And okay. And, I, and this has been mainly, I, I've noticed it mainly in the places where there's a character who gives a buff to a nearby unit, and that buff is greatly multiplied if it's a large unit. For example, death. This is actually in the core book now. Um, that instead of being within six inches, it's wholly within 12. Um, the Slaves of Darkness, whereas a unit within, I, I can't remember if it was in eight inches or six inches, doesn't matter, gained the benefit of whatever the hero was giving them. Now they have to be wholly within. And so this kind of shifts how you play the games. And, and you're still getting away, able to get away with this. There's still plenty of War Scrolls with the rule that they have to be within. Right. And like you saw in our game, the cave squigs spreading out so that it was, was gonna say, near like, the back. They're still near the squig yeah. herders. You can funnel them through little cavers, but you get your skeletons way up the field. You know, Keep one back. all the way back, and I got this buff. Right. Get rid of that. A lot of that's getting rid of that way. I, th that I, way. I think I, I wouldn't be surprised if every war scroll that had something that, like that slowly got updated, at least where it mattered. Like, I don't know if they're going to change Moon Clan Grots ever. I don't know. I don't, well, Maybe. I'm still hoping for the Moon Clan Grot Battle Dome, so. Maybe. I, was, I, I could see them folding it into something else more, but I'm not sure. Um, but I like it. I like how they're changing a lot of them to be wholly within, because that forces you to keep your hero with the unit, and the hero in the unit can't be spread out it, and benefiting from multiple buffs. It feels closer to 7th edition 40k or fantasy, where you, characters join units, then it's right. you know, far behind them. You would say, fight better. Fight better. And yeah, yeah. And, and some of those buffs are really big, like giving an entire unit of zombies a 6-up ignoring wounds. Is, it actually does stack. It does multiply really well. And you just kept your vampire lord here, and you had your big blob of zombies and your big blob of skeletons. Well, now you've got to put them right next to them, and you've got to have a necromancer over here within 12 inches of these ones. Like, it's still doable. <laughs> it's still totally doable, but you're not able to just kind of sit in the Wait, middle. I think, though, is the table actually just looks nicer. Does that, too? Like, it, it, your, your unit and your character, your unit saw, you know, all the way over here, back to the character. Yeah. It looks nicer. And when you combine that with the new rule in the core rule book that at the end of the turn you have to kill guys that are not in coherency, yeah. that really makes a big difference. I think those two things over time are going to kind of be the death of the spread out unit to gain extra buffs. The only thing that's going to keep those alive is there's still plenty of war scrolls with that in there, and so it's going to be a lot more work for them to change what's in a war scroll. Because it's hard to FAQ they, stuff in they're, a war they're, scroll. They're mostly the older war scrolls. Yes. Yes. So maybe they're not going to be phased out eventually. Or maybe, they need, or maybe they need the buff. Or maybe they need the buff. Hey, hey that's... Yeah, maybe they just have to... <laughs> so Skaven, Skaven. Where did I see all of it then? Yeah, see so Flesh Eater Core, Quartz. Um, they're wholly within 12 inches. Get to ignore wounds on a 6 plus. So I've just been seeing that a lot. It's not just in the Allegiance abilities. It's also in Command Traits. It's in other stuff as well. And some of the, a lot of the new spells... All those spells have to be placed, the endless spells have to be placed wholly within. Yeah. Um, yeah, see, like the Iron Jaws, for example, it used to be that uh, you roll for each hero in the hero phase. If you roll six plus, they choose a unit within six inches and they get to move or charge or pile in. Is that one wholly within? Yes, wholly within 12 inches. 12. So they, they, okay. Which, you know, they can't just say wholly within six inches because yeah, you're gonna, never going to be able to do that. You're going to get one five man squad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But even like the new Burning Head that squad has to be wholly within nine inches to reroll ones to hit. So, I don't know. What's your take on that? Um, okay, like you said, it, it, it's visually better. Uh, it's less gamey. Um, it's less annoying. It, is, it, it's, it, it forces you to um, commit your characters one way or another. I, I, it, it, or bring more of them. Or bring more of them. Or bring more of them, yeah. There, there's no downside to this. I think this is better for the game. Yeah, because we saw this happen in 40K. Um, I remember the orcs. The big complaint was having like your... Yeah, your war boss was nearby to give him the plus one attack, and they got the pain boy close by, and then you got this big blob of work boys and another big blob of work boys, and you'd see them like this one little tail, and then the rest of the blob fighting, but that tail went back to those two guys, and so you get these two tails coming to these two characters going all the way out there, and it just was like really. I played a lot of games where the orc um, 
custom force field was affecting units that weren't wholly within the bubble. I can't remember the bubble. Right. Nine. Is it nine? Whatever. Whatever it is. Uh, not realizing that, yeah, you have to be all within it. And then playing games after, I'm like, oh, oh i got to really move these characters a lot more than I am. you got to risk them a little bit more. Yeah, because wholly within is a lot harder to pull yeah. off. Assuming it's not a huge number, of course. So, yeah, that's, that's the big thing I saw change. There's a lot of little changes. Like, a lot of the aura abilities have changed to wholly within. And I think that's a fundamental change Probably that we're going to see. That's going to kind of cascade through a lot of things. Characters is joining units again is how I see it. Characters is joining our units. Yeah. That's where they belong. Yeah. Like a mega boss belongs at the front of a group of guys. And now with the lookout sir rule, he can be out front and still get the minus one to hit him with shooting. Um, and goblin shamans belong right behind a blob of a lot of grots. Yeah. Like the necromancer belongs in the middle of a blob of skeletons. Uh, yeah. Or at the back. He can be at the front too, but you'd probably keep him at the back. But he's still there with them. He's like leading the, the skeletons. He's not just like, hey guys, up there, stop crumbling. <laughs> Uh, and, and it's like, I'm going to do my magic from a distance. It's like, no, 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 Get in the game. Get in the game. Yeah, get over there. No, 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 no. You get to do that. But I think overall, you're right. It's like, uh, when you look at it, the layout's the same. They did the adjustments for the points, but we've seen that once, not the second time, because 2017's General's Handbook updated the points. Yeah. 2016 added them, 2017 modified them, so we're just seeing that again. But they're taking into, I think the reason it's a bigger deal is because it's taking into consideration all the changes to the rules. Yeah, well, yeah. That that they are making all of that. (sighs) Now, thankfully, if you've been tired of me rambling, Steve's going to be doing most of the talk in the next one. I don't promise that, of course. (laughs) Is that a zero or an A-OK? A-OK. I read one of them. Seraphim. Well, yeah, but you understand the overall, and yeah. so you can talk about. No, this is this was this was interesting. So, so, so we are going to in the next video in the vault. So that's basically that's your overview of the General's Handbook 2018 and our thoughts. Great book, definitely need to have it. Uh, love the new open play narrative play stuff they've added in. I love the fact that there's a bajillion scenarios now that you can play. Um, the updates to the Legion's abilities are good. The new points good. All that kind of stuff's good. And now we're going to talk about summoning. Summoning's coming back. Yeah, that'll be at the link below in the Mini Wargaming Vault. So if you're not a Vault member, well, now's the time to become one. Click that link, get a free seven-day trial, get instant access to everything in the Vault. And watch the video about summoning, watch the extra battle reports, watch all the extra Age of Sigmar stuff, and hopefully that'll then hook you. And the tons more to come. Yeah, lots and lots of more. <laughs> we're going to be uh, bloodshot eyes in about a week or two as we do so much but we're having so much fun doing it so I, I, I like right now I just want to play more right. I'm like we're talking about this stuff I'm like we've got to do this review but I really want to just go play more Make sure can I just play I just play yeah I just want to play um, and like even more models right That's now being rebased from square to circle like we still have hundreds yeah you should honestly you should see the back office it's tons 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 entire Skaven army dispossessed wanderers darkling covens more Marauders, uh, rebasing. Everything, everything. Just everything. And then we've got a ton of stuff out to painting partners right now. So there's updates to, there's just tons of models coming in. So over the summer, you are going to see all sorts of new Age of Sigmar stuff that we've never been able to cover before. And it's going to be awesome. Plus more narrative campaigns, mm. which is They're good. always the best. They're so fun. They're so fun. <laughs> they are. So yeah, so go ahead, click the link below, go watch the video all about summoning. And we'll see you in that next video. Happy Wargaming.